Hello, welcome to part 12 and the final part. We're there. We've um, made a very basic bare bones version of an FPS shooter with a loop round mechanic with multiple uh, weapons, um, ammo and um, enemies that we can manipulate and obviously all of these scripts can be manipulated into your own um, unique FPS game. So this is why it's just a very light version, only 12 parts to this. Um, so um, we're in the finishing parts really of just getting things popping up on our screen with the UI. So um, first things first, we're going to get this um, UI ammo popping up because at the moment we're just reading it from our um, probably the weapons themselves, I think. And da, 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 look my camera, weapons, so sh pistol. There we go, yeah, so we can see that um, we've got our ammo type here, so that means we are reading it from our player. That's no worries, that's fine. Just think I have to change the script around, that's okay. So ammo amount for um, element zero for sh uh, bullets, and then we have shells. This is why we have this, this key naming here. Um, lovely, fantastic. So, oh, we've also, we've also done um, zoom in sight as well, which is really, really cool. So, um, right, let's think about um, getting this UI up. So this, first things first, to make things really a lot easier for us, let's actually create that UI. So, um, let's right click on the UI we already have, because we already have our player canvas and our game over canvas. So what we're gonna do is create a new canvas and we are gonna go to UI, go to, Canvas, and we are going to name this Ammo Display Canvas. So we want to be absolutely obvious within games development, especially um, uh, with working in groups and things like that, especially with an FPS game like this. Um, you want um, anyone to be able to find any of this, and it, it clearly explains what each of these elements are. So it's really nice and easy to pick out and find. Lovely, so um, let's look at that um, sort sort number. So we can see our game over canvas is a sort, um, sort order one, that's fine. Our player canvas is for our site is um, zero, um, but that needs to be in front all of the time. So what we can do with this, if we change this to two, our game over canvas to two, and we're gonna change our ammo display to one, and that should sort things out nicely. Lovely, so once we've done that, we are gonna right click on our ammo display canvas. So ammo display canvas, we're gonna to go to UI, and we're gonna use Text Mesh Pro. So um, I think we might have used Text Mesh Pro before in this tutorial, yes we have, because for the game over, for the game over canvas as well. So we've already used it, so that's absolutely fine. What we're going to do is we are going to name this um, text. Uh, what should we name it? It's just we could just normally name it ammo text. Oh, so let's call it ammo text. Lovely. Um, and then we can put ammo there just like that. Fantastic. Cool. So, and as we can see, we should be able to, if we go here, hold alt, so we should be able to click that to the to the top right hand corner. Um, but if we use our tools here, we should, oh, why can't I use the grabber tool? There we go. And grab our text tool. I'm just going to, now that's fixed in the top right, we can just move this down and left. And I might just make it a little bit bigger with the rec tool, so it's not, getting rid of anything, lovely. We can change the font as well by just downloading a font, putting that into our project files and linking it to our font asset here. Um, I'm not gonna do that for now, I'm just gonna make this look good so we can bold that up, that looks quite nice already. Uh, da, 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 and I'm, I'm fine with that. Lovely, cool. So, um, I'm not gonna do anything else to the left for now yet, that's fine with me and then hopefully we can get a number here in a moment. So, uh, do, 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 do. so we've named it ammo text, we've positioned the text where we want, and um, we've anchored it as well. Um, 
lovely. So actually, let's make sure it is going to crush down. Yeah, that is fine. That's anchored nicely. Cool. Just making that check. Um, and okay, so let's implement this into a script that we already have. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Let's loft it onto the weapon script because that's where our ammo is. Cool, lovely. So the first thing we need to do within our weapon script is say that we're using, just like the UI, but we're actually using um, Text Mesh Pro. So let's say right up here, let's say using TMP Pro, there it is. Cool, lovely. So once we've done that, that will enable us to, let's create um, a variable class of private. Um, and this is, oh, I always get this wrong, it's text mesh pro. Oh, why is it not popping up? It should pop up, text mesh pro. Um, I think it's GUI. Oh, it's not popping up for some reason. How weird. Oh, it's um, U U G I. Is it U G I? Text Mesh Pro U G I. There it is. Why couldn't I use that earlier? Oh, but, oh I'm getting so silly today. Dear me. So it should be. Well, that's no. Why is it doing this? Oh, because I put test. Oh, my days. Text Mesh Pro. Sorry, I'm just going mad today. There we go. Now it's popping up. I thought it was going crazy. And it wasn't reading the, um, the library properly, but it is now. And we can call this, uh, just call this ammo text. I don't think we've got anything else. Ammo type, ammo slot, no. Let's call this ammo text. Awesome, so we need this to pop up into our serialized field just to make sure to pop up in our expector. Lovely. Um, so let's, us. Cool. We could probably save that and see if we can quickly link this. Do, 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 do. Let that compile. Lovely. So if we go to what's this attached to? Weapon is attached to the player, I believe. No, it's not. Ah, yep, yep, yep. So it is attached to each gun. So let's break this down. So let's go pistol. There we go. So it's asking for its text mesh pro. So um, we're, so we're going to have to distinguish our each of our texts for each piece of ammo ammunition that we have for our bullets and for our shotgun. So first things first. Let's just drag that over to there, and then let's go into shotgun, and again drag this ammo text over to there. Lovely, let's save that very quickly. Um, and then let's write the rest of the script. And then we can see if that has it implemented and worked. All right, um, so we're gonna have to probably, let's create a new method called, let's do it at the bottom here, I'm happy with that. Display ammo. Um, and then that's going to probably be, let's make it a private void. And then we can say int current ammo equals ammo slot. So we need to grab the slot first, get current ammo, and then ammo type. Otherwise, we're going to be in a whole heap of trouble. Um, ammo type, lovely. So then we can say ammo text dot text is then equal to the current ammo, hopefully. And then we can say dot to string, lovely. That would be the easiest way of doing that. Fantastic. So now we've added that. Um, we just need to outline this display ammo in update. So let's go to wherever update is. Hopefully we do have an update. Cool. Let's just put this at the top. And we can just call this display. 
Lovely, fantastic. Save that. Um, cool, so we have dragged, say that again, dragged our ammos there. So this should distinguish between both of our slots, which I'm happy with. Um, right, let's test this out. Let's press play. Ah, oh, wicked. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, uh, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And we can't keep clicking, so it should be able to go into my shotgun. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Fantastic. That is working. Lovely. Uh, we've lost the ammo thing. We have to um, add the string to that um, in a moment. I'm not going to worry about that for now. The functionality is working. The basics are there. I'm happy with that. Lovely. Cool. So um, let's save this game. Clear that. So um, the next thing we're going to do is create um, a damage impact because at the moment we um, a damage. So when you're playing a computer game and you get damaged, you get like this red bar or you get slashes on the screen or something like that from whoever's damaging you. We're going to add that um, onto our onto our screen. So let's have a look. Um, oh, first things first, let's create it. So this is why I have Photoshop open. So what we're going to do is I've already put the settings up here for us. So 1920 over 1080 at 72 resolutions and we're going to click create and we're going to create this kind of this red kind of gradient popping across our screen here so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to layer new and layer so we're going to create a new layer on top of this and we can just call this damage and then we can grab our gradient tool which is here so gradient is also hidden might be hidden in the paint bucket tool and what I'm going to do is new, use guides because I don't want to look make this red damage look weird. I don't want it to make it off center when we're playing our game because that will personally really bug me. So what we're going to do is go to view and we're going to add some a uh, new guide and we're going to say vertical, lovely, and we can actually just put 50%. So it says 50% of that document. Cut that in half. View, new guide, horizontal, 50% horizontal, lovely. So we can do our gradient from here. What I'm going to do is hold shift because it's going to straighten our gradient from there. Lovely. Boom. Oh, fantastic. So this looks quite nice. I might just control Z and make it a little bit shorter. Let's see if we can, what does that do? Oh, that's way too much. I might go a bit more out there. That looks quite good. I'm happy with that. Lovely. So once we have this, we can go to view and clear those guides. And we can also unlock this background and we can also delete this background because we don't want it to have, or we want it to have a transparent background. So I'm not sure if that actually did a transparent background. Oh, it appears it did. Hopefully it did anyway. So if we go, duh, 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 duh. oh, that's what I wanted. Let's do that again. So let's, Add those guides in again. Dear me. Uh, so new guide. Let's do this nice and quickly. Just as a recap as well, because we've done it wrong. New guide. Um, I tried to find some things online and I just couldn't, so I just thought it might be easier to make something here. Um, I know it doesn't look any different, but we can see this checkered means um, transparency. So I'm just going to do that. Oh, that's way too much. Let's do that. Oh dear. Let's go back and back and back. Um, let's just add a new layer, actually. I'm just going to delete that one. Start from fresh. Make it add. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We can we'll be able to see this red round there. Anyway, we don't have to worry about the guides. Um, they won't come in on our main image. So we can just go to File. Do, 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 do. Where's Export? There we go. Export. Export as a quick PNG. Let's save this to Desktop. And we can just 
save this as our um, damage damage screen PNG. Save. Lovely, fantastic. Um, so thank you, Photoshop. Well, actually, I might keep that open. You never know. You might need it again. So I'm just going to go back into here. Go into assets, and we're going to drag in our. There we go, damage screen, and we're just going to drag that into just there. And do, 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 where are you? Hopefully, we can read this as a just reading it as a two D texture. That is annoying. Let's change that to a sprite UI. Um, single alpha is transparency. Yep, indeed, to apply. Lovely, there we go. So we can see that we've now got that transparency there. So we just needed to change it within Unity. Fantastic. So what we're going to do next is we are going to create ourselves a brand new UI. So, um, and this one is going to be called Damage Canvas, just like the ammo, or we could call it Damage Display Canvas as well. So let's. Right click on here, UI just like before. Again, make it nice and easy for other people to read if they come into come into this. Um, this, oh, we're gonna have to sort out those layers again, aren't we? That sort order. So let's call this damage screen or damage display canvas. Lovely. So this, that was on top at two. Ammo is on one, that was at zero. Let's change this to, so that was two, let's just change that to five. And we can just change this to three. And that should work for us because they should only come in, if they come in together, um, then the game over, it will be game over. And then that should be on top, so that should be fine. Cool, so once we've got our um, damage display canvas, let's right click and go down to UI and we're gonna choose uh, image. Lovely, so there's that image. For some reason, not on top, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Um, oh yeah, it's not on top, is it? I just realized we just made sure it's not on top, but that's fine. We're then gonna go to this sprite, or actually we could probably just drag this in, couldn't we? Drag that in, lovely, and then we can use our rectal to stretch this damage canvas out just like that lovely that looks good i'm happy with that awesome so we just need this to pop up now and when we get damaged and actually we're going to have our ammo above that as well so damage is at three let's change that ammo quickly to four lovely there we go so we the ammo is in front of it, so even when we get damaged, we can see our ammo. Uh, let's quickly save this. So we need to script this in. So I'm thinking of creating just a brand new script for it, which we're going to add to the player. So let's do, 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 scripts. Cool. So let's call this damage display. So create C sharp script damage display lovely fantastic and we are going to add this damage display script to the player lovely and let's double click on this cool so in damage display we need to firstly pick up our the damage canvas itself so let's say private Canvas, there we go, and let's call this damage canvas. Lovely, and we're going to do the classic serialize the field. Happy with that. So we've got our canvas. Do we need anything from the libraries? No, we don't. So then we just need private float of how long it's going to remain on the screen for. So we can call it impact time. Oh, I just reminded myself what we haven't done. Cool, while we're doing this, let's 
We didn't even name that damage, did we? In that UI. So let's go to UI. Damage UI. We just call this image. Let's call this impact screen. There we go. So we know the difference now. Impact screen. So we've got our damage UI and then our impact screen in there. Cool, lovely. It's gonna resave that. So in here we've got our impact time, our damage canvas. Um, and then we can say, uh, da, 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 da. within start, we don't want the damage to appear, obviously. So damage canvas dot enabled is going to equal false. Lovely. We then want to, so this is going to be looping. So we're going to need a coroutine for this. So. Let's not write the coroutine first. We'll just write a method called public void show damage. And then within this, we'll write our coroutine and then we'll write the I enumerator for it. So let's say start coroutine and we will call the coroutine show impact. We can call it show impact screen. So then we definitely know what we're talking about. And then that's going to have a red line because we don't have our I enumerator yet. So then let's do this I enumerator. Um, sorry, I enumerator, we need to name the I enumerator, don't we? So just call it to show impact screen. Lovely stuff. Cool. So we then need to say initially damage canvas dot enabled equals uh, it will be true to start off with we then need to yield return because we want a um, new how long do we want to wait before it comes back before we're damaged again well we want to say the impact time impact time there we go oh we fiddled the um we don't need a bracket there that's why and da, 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 and we don't need one there Lovely, and then we can just say damage canvas dots enabled equals false again. Lovely, that should sort us out there. So let's save this. So we need to say when we're being damaged, don't we? So we need to jump into our enemy AI. And then on our attack targets, we can say targets. Well, what do we want from our target? Get components. And um, what do we want from him? We want the do, 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 do. yeah, we just want the want the script itself. So we want damage display. Yeah, so damage display, and then we are going to say we want the show. Do we call it show damage? Yeah, show damage method. I thought we called it impact something. No, we didn't. There we go, show damage. Shush. Cool, lovely. So that should, if we save that. Lovely, so that compiles. So if you have any errors at all, doesn't appear so. Let's go into player. Let's look at what we've got with that screen. There we go. So it's asking for the damage canvas. There we go. Damage display canvas. Drag that in. Save our game. Press play. Initially nothing enabled. So let's see if we can get damaged. Oh, there we go. Yep. Popped up. Popped up. There we go. It's a bit flashy, but oh, there we go. Fantastic. So we just go restart. And then we've got a weird, I've got a weird freezy bit of my game, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But that seems to be working nice and lovely. So it shoots, and you can damage me. Yep, bang, bang. <laughs> Still got a weird animation, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Cool, thank you very much. Um, the bare bones of creating an FPS is there. What is this? Oh, it's that set destination thing we don't need to worry about. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little series and you create some amazing um, FPS games.
See you soon.